family. Okay, so now that I've gotten my testimony out of the way, I know that there's obviously much, much more to what I could share. And someone was asking if I'm going to continue. I, I'm going to pray about it because I wanted you to know um, that <coughs> the gift that I have, or gifts that I have, came with a price that I didn't just, God didn't just say, you know, I'm going to use you and nothing, you know, that I didn't have to go through anything. That being said, uh, I know a lot of you have gone through things or you wouldn't have encountered my channel. And I wanted you to know that our Heavenly Father has always been with you. He's never left you nor forsaken you. It just sometimes feels that he's not he, 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 I mean, his infinite wisdom, sometimes it feels as though he's not there, but he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. And if you call on him, he will answer. That being said, um, I have a, an amazing, I have a few things I'd like to share with you, but this one I think takes precedence. Um, because, um, first of all, it's a process that this particular subscriber is going through. And I really encouraged her to start a channel to share her experience because she's so articulate and well-spoken. But I think this is it's more about her healing than it is about her sharing her story. Like, I mean, if she was in a position where she felt she could share it, then I would, I'd be so open to it. And she actually said that she might be willing to start a channel. I, I, I help her with that. But I'm going to share her comments with you so you can... Kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to say right now. There's people out there that need, that are going through some stuff related to what I've been through. And I've been, I, th I don't even know, I feel like I've been, there's so many things I've been through because of the, the amount of people that I'm going to be encountering, which is kind of sad because I've been through so much. It's been so heavy. Um, and our Heavenly Father had to tear my part of my life down so He can rebuild me and sh kind of sh show me what life, what love, what what life is and love is really truly about because at, at first because of my foundation I did I didn't really know anyway this subscriber I'm not gonna say her I'm not gonna share her name but I would love for her if you're watching my dear to chime in in the comments if you have a chance to see this video I know you will but I'm gonna share it because it, it was a public comment that I think a lot of people have missed because of just the nature of how YouTube has been handling certain channels lately. Okay, so I'm gonna read this, and um, and then I'll put links that kind of can, uh, support this these comments in the description. Okay. Yourself and fasting fat man have literally saved my life. Until 35 days ago, I was lit. Vir uh, virtually crippled, barely able to walk, and incapable of wiping my own backside. I was crippled by the effects of rheumatoid arthritis, which was worsened by bad eating habits. Despite knowing better, my daily diet consisted of pizza, Chinese takeaway, and a tub of vanilla haagen ice cream every day. I would wake up re re resolved that I was embarking upon day one of a 40-day fast. I was absolutely determined to heal the leaky gut that was setting my joints on fire. Since April 2018, I would wake up every morning, note in my diary that I was on a day one of a 40-day water fast. I would starve all day, excited that I was healed towards day two of my fast. Then come 9 p.m., I would order a takeaway meal, sometimes two from different restaurants after which I would eat an enormous slice of cake and a tub of ice cream in any event my rheumatoid arthritis became increasingly debilitating additionally I gained nearly four stones in weight about three months ago I stumbled across an old video you made on my day 20 of a 40 of a water fast you'd embarked on just about the same time I stumbled across a fasting fat man. I'll put his link, the link to his channel in the description box. I watched all of your fasting videos, including the one which your daughter was face painting in a local fair which was rained off. However, anyhow, both yourself and the fasting fat man inspired me to get off my fat backside and help myself. My life as an, an absolute nightmare. I was a virtual cripple at 33 years old. 
My fingers and wrists were inflamed to such an extent that I was barely able to lift a water glass. I had to use my teeth to open water bottles and most embarrassingly, I was unable to clean myself after using the loo. If I required the lavatory at night, I, cr I crawled from my bedroom into the bathroom as walking was excruciating. Ultimately, I was forced to purchase a chamber pot which kept under my bed. Before getting out of bed in the morning, I would spend 90 minutes compressing my fingers, wrists, knees, arms, and ankles, after which I would soak in the bath for about an hour. Without this daily ritual, walking would, would, would have been nigh on impossible. My restricted movement meant I was unable to use public transit. I live 30 minutes outside of London, so my employers pay for an annual train ticket, which includes use of London's underground and transport for London buses. London's underground system involves a great deal of walking and at many situations stair climbing to exits. I was physically incapable of driving so I took taxis to and from work. I was not able to use public transit. I was spending over £600 a week on taxis. Additionally, I was self-medicating with over-the-counter inflammatories, taking six 300 milligram capsules a day. I refused to take prescription medication as the two I was offered spun, spud simply masked the symptoms of RA, rheumatoid arthritis, but result in severe liver, liver damage. She did her research for sure. Despite being a virtual cripple, I could not stop myself eating all the things I knew were making my conditions worse. I was obsessed with pizza, hamburgers, chips, ice cream, crisps, cake, bread, pasta, steak, Chinese takeaway. I was spending at least 30 pounds every night on takeaway meals, which were delivered to my home. Every restaurant I telephoned knew exactly what I wanted. They, they would simply say, good evening, ma'am. The usual order. Ooh. The more I ate, the more pain I experienced and the fatter I got, which put an additional strain on my knees and ankles. In any event, watching your, yours and the Fasting Fat Man's videos inspired me to change my eating habits. I began my first exa exactly 36 days ago. The first two days, I followed a hard, dry, fast regime as, a res as, a f as I felt I would find it easier to subsequently water fast. For two days, I did not touch or drink water. I didn't even brush my teeth. The hard dry fast worked to a treat because on the second day, I was dreaming of water, not ice cream. Miraculously, on day three, I was able to get out of bed and sit on my feet without falling over. Fantastic. After my first sip of water on day three, I knew I would continue the fast because I walked to the kitchen as opposed to hobbling as I'd done over, the, over, over a year. I wasn't, it wasn't until the next day that I realized I hadn't taken a single anti-inflammatory pill. I had been taking six 300 milligram ibuprofen every day. By day seven, I was, I was laser focused on my fast because I was able to open water bottles with my hands, I was able to lift my laptop with one hand, and I was able to walk to the loo in the middle of the night. So I got rid of the chamber, chamber pot. I was on my, it was on my intention to complete the 40-day water fast, but on day 28, I just could not continue as I was suffering intense nausea and I was spitting excess excessively. So I resolved to tweak the fast. I bought a ton of vegetables and made a ton of vegetable, ton of vegetable broth. I drank two hot servings in the evening for four days, after which I added tons of thinly sliced green leafy vegetables and onions. On day six and seven, I made okra soup and separately boiled, then, ooh, then sauteed two packs of organic chicken wings and, and uh, drumsticks. After, for two days, Saturday and Sunday, I had about five servings of okra soup, accompanied by several chicken drumsticks. After seven days of feasting on vegetables, okra, no, vegetable broth, okra soup, and chicken, I resumed my water fast. Yesterday, Monday, June the 8th, was a hard, dry fast day, as has been the case today. It, my, it was my intention to do another 28-day water fast followed by 7-day vegetable, broth, okra, soup, and chicken. I have fully kit, uh, kitted out home gym 
which I had been unable to use over a year, but I, but I have made a full use of it over the past four weeks. I cannot believe the extent to which my body has changed over such a short time. The inf inflammation in my hands and wrists have reduced by about 90%. I was unable to lift my arms at all. Now I'm able to swing a four kilogram kettlebell above my head. My knees were painful and inflamed, causing me to hobble like an old lady. The pain and inflammation has reduced by about 95%. My ankles are about 50% better, but I am now I'm now able to climb and descend stairs. They are, they are, wait, they, my, your, her ankles are still quite painful, but nothing like they were before. I embarked upon the fast this morning. This morning, I walked for an hour on a 7% incline at a speed of about 5 kilograms, oh, kilo, kilometers. I also managed 30 minutes of upper body exercise on my Life Fitness cable machine. I shall do a 40 minute yoga session at home in the morning. As I will not, not, as I will not drink, be drinking water until I arrive home from work in the evening. My, my motivation to continue fasting is, is healing my body. Nobody, especially not my doctors, can believe the transformation. I have kept a very detailed diary and, uh, of every ache, pain, every time I had urinated, defecated, how much I have slept, as well as every symptom I have experienced. My, doctors, my doctor has made copies of my diary and will continue to monitor me until I decide when my body is fully healed. I know that gluten, sugar, processed carbohydrates, some nightshade vegetables, not tomatoes, and dairy are triggers for my rheumatoid arthritis. Ooh. So I intend to avoid them at all. Ooh, but, you know, I intend to avoid them for at least a year. Absolutely nothing, not even ice cream, tastes as nice as simply being able to walk or climb stairs. Anyhow, I would like to thank you for literally helping to save my life. I shall copy and paste this comment to the Fasting Fat Men. You are both my guardian angels. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is, um, it was, it's, 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 I wish I could read it the way that I read it to myself. It's just, it was so smooth and so well written. I really, I want to just, if you're hearing this, my dear, I really encourage you to share your journey. You shared it with your doctor. You shared it with me and the Fasting Fat Man. And anyone who actually loves to read would be able to read it in the comment section because that's where you pasted it. But it's, it's, I could just envision all you've experienced. Your, your description are like so vivid. Anyway, there's a little bit more to share. I'm going to share this and then... Um, Thank you so much for the sweet and motivating response. For the first time in months, I took the train to London this morning on a fast train. The journey took me 25 minutes. Upon arrival at London Bridge Station, I was able to make my way down to the underground station, which I, a quick five-minute journey, train journey just deposited me in a two-minute walk away from my office building. The same journey by taxi takes about two hours. As my ankles are still painful, I wasn't able to walk as fast as, as most commuters. But I managed the escalators, the long walk between station platforms, as well as a couple of stair staircases. When I arrived at work, I shut the door in my office and I cried. I wet buckets of bucket loads because I could not believe that I had actually achieved such a feat, especially as I had been told by three medical professionals that my condition would become increasingly worse and I could I would most likely end up in a wheelchair. I do mean when I say to you help that you help save my life. Thank you. With reference to your suggestions of starting a YouTube channel, I, ha I have kept a meticulous diary of my journey from the day I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis two years ago. Up until then, I have been a cross-country runner since high school. I also kickboxed and played se semi-professional hockey. After the, the RA diagnosis, my life fell apart. In any event, I kept a written and photographic record of my journey. I would love nothing more than to share my experiences with others, but I feel that I have quite a way to go before I'm completely physically and mentally healed. I was psychologically traumatized prior to educating myself. Conventional doctors assured me that was no cure for RA, and I told 
and I was told that ultimately I would have to live with a debil debilitating condition. As a physical act, physically active individual, it was a very bitter pill to swallow. As the pain of RA increased, I began researching the subject online as I was determined to avoid taking toxic medications prescribed to me. I read dozens of articles and discovered the con connection between the gut and the disease. I subsequently read a great amount of fasting and the connection between food and illness. After educating myself, I lacked the motivation to help myself until I stumbled across your videos. At first, I got the impression that you were a little mad, but I was intrigued, so I watched every single one you made. I must say that I was quite impressed by the fact that you were cooking meals for your daughter despite the fact that you were fasting. Watching you cook whilst you were fasting is what lit the fire for me. Additionally, I was inspired by the fasting fat man on day 93 of his journey. I kept thinking, if they can do it, I can do it. When I'm feeling a little braver, I would... We, uh, okay, the rest of it is personal. Okay. When I did my 40-day fast... Okay, I have been led to do a YouTube channel, channel way before I knew my calling on my life. And I thought this message could not be for me. It has to be for my daughter because I'm not, first of all, I'm not a person that likes to be in public. I like, I don't like, I like to be in public and I love people, but I don't like the attention. I would never, ever want to be a superstar, ever. That's never been me. So when my daughter started her channel, she was not, she was invested, but not really because she's a very social person as well. Um, but I think the work of editing and stuff like that, she would actually do well if she had someone to edit her stuff for her because she's so outgoing and she's constantly traveling. I think a YouTube channel would work well for her. That being said, eventually, it, it came, when I was separated from my daughter, because at one point I was, I continued to get the message that I need to start a YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, maybe it's me. So Dear Daughter Diaries is the channel I started. Um, they're kind of like just vlogging my everyday whatever just like any other vlogger would do but there was nothing really that I felt I should share There's a, there was a lot going on um, and that's probably part three of my testimony if I was going to share more but I just didn't know who I was at the time I didn't know I knew I had gifts but I thought that you know everyone had that kind of a gift I didn't know it was uh, unique to me and uh, so when I did my 40-day water fast. I got to day 20 and I realized I should be sharing this. <laughs> this is significant. I should be sharing this. Because I couldn't believe I got to 20 days and I had not eaten anything. That to me was a miracle. D doing it for 10, I've done 10. I've done, you know, 10. And, before that, I had done 10 and less than that. But to do 20 days was like, wow. And I really wasn't a heavy set person at that time there's a time in my life well I would have said yeah I had enough weight on me you know after having children sometimes you gain the weight but at this point it was more about health I was getting a lot of messages about my health and about the history of cancer and other illnesses in my family line so I am so thankful that I listened because I just can't believe to the degree that this has helped my 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 friend I was moved when I watched when I read this and actually I feel like I watched something because it her as she describes she has a photographic way of describing everything every experience she should really write a book and I'm going to encourage her to do that because I, I, I am impressed with her anyway I just wanted to just share that with you and um, I'm trying to figure out a way to start a channel for her and just like hand over the password and let her just do it. She can change the password when she gets it. But I really do believe, even if she never used her face, she just like talked and read or spoke. I was so moved by this. I'm so honored and I give all praises to our Heavenly Father because believe me, I did not want to share anything. And as I was fasting, that nausea that she described that she was experiencing... Some days when I was doing my, when I was sharing my, uh, my testimony on my 40 day fast, I was feeling extremely nauseous. So if you're watching this, my dear, my hat's off to you. It's really you and our Heavenly Father working together. I'm just a tool that he's used. In relations to nausea, if you're ever fasting again and you feel nauseous, sea salt will get you through some of the days.
that will help but the things that she's eat, doing I, I mean I'm so happy and elated for her and I hope that she's actually you know somehow financially putting the money aside so she can see how much she saved by getting herself healthy and I, I just really do believe that we someone had commented on one of my channels about how I playing in my own my own feces or I just thought to myself my response was you think it's odd that I'm playing or checking out my own feces when we actually defecate in a container and hand it over to a stranger and God only knows our Heavenly Father only knows what they truly do with what we give to them in relations to yearn and our defecate like think about like how brainwashed could we be to think that what I am doing is unusual when this is what people have done all along do you know what I mean Anyway, I wanted to share that with you, and I wanted to just address to. I did uh, at, um, share my second testimony, my part two yesterday, and I was actually exhausted. But because of the nature of my situation at the time, I had the space, I had the quiet to some degree. You know, sometimes, you know, the enemy has his trolls everywhere, so sometimes it's hard to find a quiet spot to do what I have to do. But let me tell you, I just had, I felt that I had to get it done. If you can see the video, I was so exhausted. So I just wanted to let you know that. That's a little aside. Anyway, just want to let you know that I love you very much. And our Heavenly Father loves you so much more. Until next time, be blessed. I don't know. I want to link the video, I hope, hopefully, the video that she put her comment under. So you can go and read it for yourself. All right? Until next time, be blessed.